Tim Brown. Welcome to my Apple podcast, the podcast that makes a personal connection to everything Apple. For this episode, I'm going to cover iTunes 11 and all the new features that come with iTunes 11, including how to navigate through all the different tabs and categories, how to navigate back and forth between the iTunes store and your library, as well as how to sync with the iOS devices. So let's begin. I'm going to go ahead and pull up iTunes. Okay, there we go. And what you're looking at here is my music library. For those of you who are using iTunes for the first time, let me just show you a basic feature for how you actually get music into your library. Let's just say, let's say for example, you have music stored somewhere on your computer, say in your music folder. You simply go to File and Add to Library. You also see the shortcut key right beside it. You can always choose that as an option. That is Command O and bring them in like so. So that's how you add content as well as video files or any other files that you want to bring into your library. That's how you do it, namely music and videos. So let's go ahead and navigate through. What's different about iTunes 11 than previous editions of iTunes? or versions is that the menu is, has now disappeared. It used to be on the left hand side it used to be a column where you could find everything and you can just scroll up and down. Here you just have one button so you can see in the top hand corner where it says music there's now a drop down menu so instead of having this menu permanently on the left hand side you just access it by just clicking on this tab and you can go through all the different categories where all your files are stored. And you can also view, say for example, movies not just by uh, genre, but by just the general movies category, home videos, list view, and so forth. And you can go through all your categories this way. This is how you access your content. These podcasts have nothing in iTunes U right now. This is also how you access your books. So any books that you've purchased through the iTunes store from your computer can be synced to your iOS devices this way. And you even have a menu that shows all your PDFs. So you can import PDFs as well as songs and music. So you use that same feature, Command-O, and import the PDFs into your library this way. When you do that, your PDFs will show up in this particular area. Of course, you have your apps. And again, the menu is up top. And you can just click on the different categories to view which apps you want to see, whether you want to see apps for the iPhone and iPod or just apps for the iPad, iPod games, and or viewing them in list view. Okay, let's start with music and just go through the menu up top here. Here's the, the songs view. Uh, I love the albums view because you get to see all the album cover art. And let's just say, for example, you want to add album cover art to some songs where the art is missing. Well, you select the song that you want to add the art to. You can go to File and then scroll down. to library and then you'll see a menu here organize library export library import playlist export playlist get album artwork and then iTunes will locate that artwork for you now, let's just say for example though you have a lot of songs that you imported yourself or recorded yourself or pulled from different sources and iTunes is not able to recognize them right away well you can add your own album cover art. You can either go online and find the art there or just customize the art yourself. I recommend 300 pixels by 300 pixels. If you want to add your own art, you store it somewhere on your computer and do a control click on that icon and go to get info. When you get info, you'll notice that you have all these categories that are related to your song as well as some settings, uh, information, video, sorting, uh, options for controlling volume adjustment. You can even add lyrics to the song if you like. 
and here where you can actually go in and add the artwork. You just click the add button, navigate to the location where the picture is, and then insert it right in there and the artwork will appear. So that's one thing you can do. And one thing that's really nice too, you're noticing every time you click on an album, you get this drop down menu and the color feel basically resembles the, the color of the album. So it's actually very cool aesthetically. I mean, if you're really into aesthetics, this is a great way to look at your album cover art. And I'll just keep going through the different categories. Here's what it looks like under the artist tab, the genre tab. If you have music videos, this is what your music videos will look like. And playlists. Now before in iTunes, playlists used to appear on the left-hand side. So this may be confusing for some of you of some of you who are familiar with iTunes but trying to get used to the new format. You used to be able to find it over here in the left-hand column. And instead it's a menu along the top here. Stop that for a second. So if you want, let's just say you want to add a new playlist. Well, you can either do a command in, which is the normal function for adding anything new when you have an application open. So I'm going to do a command in. And I'm going to add a new playlist. I'm going to call it loops. Click done. So now I have this new playlist. It is, has appeared now under the music tab on the left hand side. And you can then click add to to add songs from your library to that that new um, playlist. So I'm going to go ahead and just add these new songs that I just imported. And you can select all the songs at one time by holding down the command key or the key with the apple on it and just selecting, keeping it held down and just select each one until you're done and then release it. And then you can then just select that grayed out area and then drag that entire area to the playlist. And now you have a new playlist set up. Okay, let me go ahead and show you some some other features that come with iTunes 11. One feature everyone has been talking about is the up next feature. When you go up to the player menu or window along the top, you'll see this little list icon. If you click on that, that shows you basically what's up next. And it's not necessarily an order of songs. It gives you the option to arrange that order. So here I have uh, a jazz ringtone that that is scheduled to play next but let's just say I want to play this song down here instead I can take that song and then drag it up to the top and have that become the next song to be played so that's how up next works it's a nice little feature to have let me go ahead and show you as well some of the features associated with the menus along the top so here's where you locate your preferences under iTunes. When you select preferences, here's where you can go through and change all of your different settings uh, as far as your library, what you want to show, what you want to view, how you want to play things back, sharing options, settings associated with the iTunes store, parental controls, devices that are synced with your library, and one I want to show you is iTunes media folder location. Now, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people, including myself, who have just way too much media. You either have tons of music, you have tons of photos, you have tons of apps, and you're running out of space on your computer. Well, if you don't want the media folder location to be inside your, music's fo your music folder where subsequently all of your files will be stored, that's associated with iTunes, you can choose a different external drive if you prefer that. So actually that's what I went ahead and, and did. I, I have an external drive attached to my computer whenever I launch iTunes. And because that's where my media folder is located, iTunes will not launch 
without that external drive being attached to my computer. I prefer to do that because now I can take all those gigabytes of music and apps and so forth and store them somewhere else so I can save the space on my computer for other things. And that's how you do that here by just clicking on change and then going to the location of your files and then and, re and resetting that location. It's that simple. So that's another nice feature. Here's file where you can go in and just manually go through an add library or you can do a command O. And this is the other option I showed you earlier about getting album artwork and so forth. Copy and paste again those are shortcut keys command C for copy command V for paste different options for viewing controls for playback here is where you can turn on iTunes match or or turn it off it's up to you how you want to do that I'm not going to show you iTunes match at this moment it'll take too long maybe for another episode uh, windows where you can view iTunes in different ways I mean right now you just have the normal iTunes view uh, you can choose to show an equalizer or choose to show a mini player. So here's the equalizer. And here's where you can control the sound of any given song that's in your library. So to show you how this works, let me click out of here for a moment. I'm going to choose a song. Uh, let me go ahead and play this song by Wes Montgomery. And now I'm going to go here to window, choose equalizer, or you could do uh, option shift two to bring it up. And here you can see I can go through and change the sound quality. So I can go right here in the preamp and just increase that. So you can see the sound actually increase quite a bit just by doing that little bit. So that's a nice option to have. And again, you do that at the window and it's option command two and you would also use option command two to get rid of it that simple also too you have the option for playing a mini player of the song that's playing uh, let me go ahead and stop this for a moment you can either select mini player or use option command three so I'll go ahead and use option command three and you notice I have a mini player also that I can access in addition to the actual iTunes library itself. You can control the size of that too by just sliding it back and forth, grabbing it on the end and just sliding it back and forth. Do an option command three to get rid of it. If you go up to window again, you'll notice you have an option to switch to mini player in place of the iTunes library. So let's go ahead and do the option command M for minimize. And now you see I just have the iTunes mini player without the iTunes library present. Do the option command M again and you bring it right back. If you want help with understanding how iTunes works, you can always just go to the help menu and just click iTunes help. Uh, you can click, you can tap on any, and you can enter any word into the search window and it'll bring up various different items and you can search the different categories you're looking for and iTunes will generate the information that you need. That's always a nice option as well. And that's the basics of your iTunes library. Okay, let's move on to the iTunes store. The iTunes store is easy to access now because the button is in the top right hand corner and all you have to do is just click on that button and boom, you're there. And this is where you can purchase all of your music, your movies, TV shows, apps, books, podcasts, and anything that you want to download from iTunes U. I don't have that many podcasts in my library right now because I'm streaming a lot of them with the, the podcast app that Apple uh, just released not too long ago. It's a wonderful application. If you haven't used it, I would check it out. But if you want to download a podcast directly to iTunes and sync that way, you can do it both ways. The podcast app will read both the files that are in your library as well as allowing you to subscribe uh, by streaming. So let me go to the podcast category and I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to a podcast. Here we have the best of. This is something that Apple does this time of year. 
for apps in all the different categories. And I'm going to scroll down to technology and find me a, a podcast to subscribe to. So it looks like the best t- technology this year is Leo Laporte and Kelly Lewis's Geek Beat TV along with Engadget. I'm going to go ahead and subscribe to Geek Beat TV and just click the subscribe button here. And it will begin to download the most recent episode of that podcast. So in this case, the most recent is Google Maps is back. So that's the one I'm going to be getting. Now, what's nice about the new iTunes 11 is that you can check your downloads no matter where, no matter where you are. If you're in a library or if you're in a store or what have you, the download button is now at the top. You see a little arrow and you'll see something running underneath to let you know if something is currently downloading. You just click on that arrow and you can see that I'm now downloading that episode of Geek Beat TV. And this is where you will see anything that you're downloading, whether it's apps, TV shows, music, or what have you. You can always access those downloads, at least the progress of those downloads, by clicking on the arrow. So now I'm going to go back to my library, go to the drop down menu to podcast, and you can now see that Geek Beat TV is now being downloaded to my podcast. And and anytime you subscribe to a podcast, you'll see all the episodes associated with it, which you can download at any time. Right now, I'm just getting the most recent episode. Okay, now I want to show you how you sync your iOS device, that is your iPhone or iPad, to iTunes. So you should have the appropriate cable that comes with your device, whether you're using iPhone 4, 4S, or iPhone 5, iPad 2, 3rd gen, 4th gen, and so forth. So let me go ahead and just hook up my phone right now. I'm using the iPhone 4S. You're going to notice some initial pop-ups. These are third-party applications that I use to sync my photos. You can just ignore those. I'll cover how, how I'll do that in a future episode. You notice I got the little turning wheel, so that means that my phone is still in the process of connecting. You see up top here, syncing iPhone, but you don't see the icon anywhere. That's because I'm in the store right now. If I go to the top right corner and click library, you now see that my phone icon appears right next to the iTunes store. And I'm currently syncing or updating any new apps or calendar updates I may have. And that's essentially what the format looks like. Nothing has changed except now you have an icon for the iPhone. To sync, you click on that button. And it will say either iPhone or iPad. And this is where you go into the menu where you control all of your different settings. Your backups and so forth are under summary. You scroll down to options, you, you notice that you also have the option to sync with iPhone over Wi-Fi. And just go through the different categories. as one for info. This is where you sync your mail and calendars if you're doing that. Uh, I'm not doing that because I have to sync calendars with my, my job at work. And I use I sync differently that way. This is also where you can find the apps on your device. And you may not know about this feature, but there are a lot of apps that allow you to access your content through iTunes. And you may be confused as to what exactly that is. Well, when you scroll down, you'll see a category that says file sharing. These are all the applications that allow you to import content into those apps via file sharing. And you can just scroll down and see what all the applications are that are available. And what you would do is you would click on that particular application and then scroll up. Or in this case, scroll down. And when you see add, you then click add. And then you can find a location where that file is and then put it right inside the app. Likewise, if you are exporting, if your application had an option to save to iTunes you would find that file right in this location here. You would then select it, scroll down to the bottom, 
and then click save to and then that will prompt you to save it to the location on your computer where you want that file to go so that works pretty well when you're using applications uh, that allow you to save documents or, or videos okay let's go ahead and move over to ringtones this is where you can sync all of those and then there's the music category and when you click on the music tab you see you have access to all the tunes that are in your library by playlist by artist by album genre and so forth and so all the music that you have in your iTunes library now becomes synced to your iPad or iPhone and you can also choose to sync music videos if you want to by just selecting include music videos and these will be videos that come with any songs that you have selected now it gets tricky with iTunes when you open up an iCloud account and you decide to start syncing with iTunes Match which essentially will allow you to sync over the cloud to the storage that Apple provides online in which case you will then be bumped out of the local storage and to the cloud so this menu actually would not appear if you chose to sync using iTunes match and this is set up using the phone for example I'm gonna go into system preferences and you'll see here that I have iTunes match turned off that is what enabled me to view all of my songs in my library however if I didn't want to sync that way and I just wanted to sync through iTunes match that is syncing all of my songs in the cloud I would then have to turn iTunes match on click enable and then you'll notice that the options will be different for me so let me go ahead and click out of this for a moment and I'm gonna actually disconnect my phone and I'm gonna go ahead now and reconnect my phone with iTunes match on and I'm going to go ahead and select the phone in the top right corner just like I did before. And I'm going to scroll through to music. And you notice that now I have no songs available. I have music selected, but with iTunes Match turned on, I'm now syncing in the cloud as opposed to syncing locally in my iTunes library. And that's the major difference. Now, it doesn't work with movies, so if you have movies in your library, you can still sync with the movies locally that are stored on your library, as you see here. Likewise with TV shows. Apple may do that in the future, but right now, only music is being matched with iTunes. Movies you can still, and TV shows, you can still sync locally. As you can see, I haven't synced with any TV shows yet. Um, largely because I don't have the room on my phone yet need to make some room for that you notice that I downloaded GeekBeat TV earlier it's now showing up as an option when my phone is selected so I can choose GeekBeat TV and then choose whatever episodes I've downloaded and with those options selected it will now appear on my phone as a podcast that I can view when I'm on the road so I'm going to go ahead and just click apply because I actually do want to watch that episode. And that's now I'm going to sync that particular episode of Geek Beak TV to my phone. Likewise, iTunes U, if you have any content there. Books. Now I showed you books earlier and this is, and also showed you how you can import your PDFs. So with books selected, that is with the iPhone, being selected as well you see all the content associated with well that's all the content that's in your library including all my PDFs as well as my books and here you can actually go through and manually select which PDFs and or books you want to appear so as you can see there's a lot of content that you can sync with your devices that's at your disposal that you may not realize. Likewise with photos. 
And right now I have iPhoto synced because I have several events set up in my iPhoto library that I want to show up on my phone. But I don't have to use that option if I don't want. I can actually select the iPhoto option here and then go to choose pictures. This will take me to my picture folder. And instead of choosing all folders, I could choose selected folders. Then I can go through and just choose specific folders that I want to show up on my iPhone or iPad. So I just say I randomly go to just select some folders here. Well, these folders that I'm selecting will now be will now show up on my iPhone as albums that are available to view when I sync my iPhone. So you may want to think about how you want to organize your photos if you want to sync in that way. Let's just say you don't want to use iPhoto. Maybe it's too much of a headache for you. So I'm going to pull up a finder window here and I'm just going to go to pictures. And what you can do is you can then go into your pictures folder and then set up a series of folders that you want your pictures to be in and you want to label your folders the appropriate category and then when you sync all of these folders will then show up as albums so you want to think about the hierarchy ahead of time what you want the folders to say what what kind of images you want to be inside them and then sync with them accordingly and they will show up exactly as they're set up in your pictures folder uh, when you're done syncing all your content to your iPhone you click done I'm just going to click don't apply and then you're back to the library mode and then you have the iTunes tab again you can go back and forth to the store to the library and then back to your phone when you have finished syncing your phone you just simply click the icon at the top left and now you're done so those are all the features associated with the new iTunes 11 how you add content to iTunes, how you navigate through the new features, how you sync with the new iTunes store, and how you sync with the iOS device. Once again, this is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in to my Apple podcast. Check you out next time.